Hello, today in Contextual Point I'm going to try to explain the relative concentration along proximal convoluted tubule. Let's try to understand this graph. We are starting in x-axis. The x-axis depicts distance along the proximal convoluted tubule length. Let's think that uh, we are looking at the proximal convoluted tubule uh, and uh, the the fluid going across the proximal convoluted tubule. This graph start in zero and going through the proximal convoluted tubule as fluid going across the proximal convoluted tubule. So if we are here, we are looking this side of proximal convoluted tubule. If we are looking here, we are looking this side of proximal convoluted tubule. So across the proximal convoluted tubule. The fluids are reabsorbing or may secreting or uh, is not reabsorbing nor secreting. Let's go the y-axis of this graph. The y-axis, excuse me, this is tubular fluid divided by plasma. The y-axis depicts to us is tubular fluid concentration relative to plasma. This means we have a substance X in example and the substance X in tubular fluid uh, this is in tubular fluid and also the substance X is in blood uh, we are looking also in substance X concentration in blood and we are dividing them this Y axis shows us the tubular fluid concentration of substance relative to plasma. So let's go on and we are looking with uh, drawings we will understand better. Okay, first we are looking glucose. As we know that we are reabsorbing all glucose in proximal convoluted tubule. This is physiologic. Uh, if we are not reabsorbing glucose, uh, as in like diabetic patients, this is not physiologic, this is pathologic. Also, we can see physiologically glucosuria in pregnant, pregnant women. So, as we know that we are reabsorbing glucose in proximal convoluted tubule, the glucose concentration in proximal convoluted tubular fluid relative to plasma is decreasing along the proximal convoluted tubule and uh, going to zero. This should make sense. Let's move on. Amino acids. As we know that we are reabsorbing amino acids this, uh, along the proximal convoluted tubule. So this should make sense too. The uh, amino acids starting at 1 and reabsorbing through the proximal convoluted tubule and going to 0 near, or near 0. Move on. Now bicarb. Same logic. We are reabsorbing bicarb uh, along the proximal convoluted tubule. And the proximal convoluted bicarb concentration in proximal convoluted tubule relative to plasma is decreasing. Let's move on. Now, the tricky part in this graph, and the important uh, part in this graph, as we can see, the sodium is here, is uh, equal to 1 or maybe a near to 1, a little bit higher than 1. As we know that we are reabsorbing sodium in proximal convoluted tubule, actually the two-third of sodium is reabsorbed in proximal convoluted tubule. But we uh, draw this sodium in one, at one. We are reabsorbing bicarb too. We are reabsorbing amino acids and glucose too. But we draw that below one, but we draw sodium a cool one. This is because, as I said at start, this graph depicts to us tubular fluid concentration relative to plasma. So, we, we should think, I can explain with an example to you. Let's think there is one, uh, 10 sodium and 10 water. And we are reabsorbing. At equilibrium, we have 5 sodium 
and five water. So we are also reabsorbing water. And 10 divided by 10 is equal to 5 divided by 5. So, as we can see, the sodium concentration in tubular fluid relative to plasma is equal to 1. So, sodium concentration is equal to plasma. This is due to we are also reabsorbing water at same pace. So, you should now understand that why we draw the bicarb amino acid glucose below the 1. Let's think why. Because, uh, let's uh, give an example with bicarb. We have 10 bicarb right now and 10 water. But in this time, in the equilibrium, we have one bicarb, but seven water. So, we uh, reabsorbed bicarb again, and we reabsorbed water again, but we reabsorbed more, uh, we, uh, sorry, we reabsorbed water less than we draw here. So, it is, it's going to be 5 divided by 7. So, this is below the 1, as you can see. So, we are uh, reabsorbing bicarb more than water. So, this should make sense. The tubular fluid concentration of bicarb relative to plasma is below the 1. Even we are reabsorbing bicarb. And even we are reabsorbing sodium. So, this graph, the concept of relative concentrations along proximal covalent tubule graph, is understanding this formula, understanding this concept in here. Let's move on. Now we are looking potassium. We are, uh, we are reabsorbing potassium too, but now you can understand that we are uh, reabsorbing potassium, but we are reabsorbing water more than potassium, so the concentration uh, of tubular fluid in uh, concentration of potassium in tubular fluid relative to plasma is about a little bit about one same uh, let's uh, let me draw again for making more clear 10 potassium 10 water and we are reabsorbing again through the proximal commodity tubule at, at the equilibrium we have 5 potassium, but now we have 4 water. So we reabsorbed more water than potassium. So we draw the potassium a little bit higher than sodium. Of course, these numbers are not real, but I'm just trying to give an example to more, make it more clear. Uh, sorry, this is chloride. Same logic as potassium. We are reabsorbing chloride, but we are reabsorbing more water, so the tubular fluid concentration of chloride more uh, relative to plasma is above the one. Same, we are reabsorbing rare too. Same logic as chloride. Now, this is important. We have a uh, we have a substance that called inulin, and we the inulin is represent the GFR actually. This is because inulin has a specific uh, feature. Inulin is not reabsorbed and not secreted. So if we have uh, 10 inulin at start, we have 10 inulin again at last. So we have 10 inulin at start in proximal cumulative tubule. Again, we have 10 inulin, inulin in, uh, at the last part of the proximal cumulative tubule. This is why the inulin is equal to GFR. And also, this is why we draw, at, we, we draw in this inulin here, because we are still reabsorbing water. We are still reabsorbing water, but inulin uh, is stable. So we are drawing above one. Okay, move on. Now we are looking the creatinine. 
and we know that we are calculating GFR via Kraepelin. Uh, there's actually some questions about the, the calculation of GFR, and we should use the Kraepelin. The, the the calculation and the formula is important too, but uh, I will not say this formula in here. But we know that if when we are uh, calculating Kraepelin, calculating GFR via Kraepelin, we know that. We, the GFR, the Kraepelin calculation of GFR a little bit over, overestimates the real, the real GFR. And actually you can see that in this graph. The Kraepelin a little bit overestimates the GFR. This is because uh, the Kraepelin differs in a little. Kraepelin a little bit secreted a long proximal convoluter tubule so this is why we are a little bit drawing above inulin so across the proximal convoluter tubule some creatinine secreting to the proximal convoluter tubule uh, okay let's move on and the last substance in this graph, uh, I'm uh, sorry, the, the paraamino hippuric acid. We are using paraamino hippuric acid in uh, calculating uh, Rena plasma flow, as you know. And this uh, substance has a, an, uh, has, has a specific feature too. The paraamino hippuric acid has a feature that it always secreted to the proximal convoluted tubule totally secreted to the proximal commodity tubule. So, this is why we draw the uh, paramine hippuric acid uh, above the inulin and more than above the creatinine, of course, as you can see. This is, we are totally secreting paramine hippuric acid to proximal commodity tubule and this is why we are using paramine hippuric acid to calculate renal plasma flow, of course. Now, uh, this, uh, at the last, I should say something uh, to make questions more easy. So, we should know that the bicarb below the one, glucose below the one, and we know the logic underneath in this, uh, why we are uh, drawing and why the glucose are below the one, why the bicarb below the one, why chloride, urea above the one. Also, we should know that inulin in it is here and creatinine a little bit higher than inulin, and at the top of this graph we have paramino hyperic acid. Now, you should see that this graph is not directly depicts to us what we are reabsorbing or secreting. This graph actually directly depicts to us what is the concentration of substances in tubular fluid relative to plasma. So, as you can see that, we are totally reabsorbing all of all substances below the inulin. We are reabsorbing urea, chloride, potassium, sodium, bicarb, amino acids, glucose, and we are secreting substances above the inulin, creatinine and paramino hyperic acid. And of course we are not uh, reabsorbing nor secreting the inulin. I hope uh, I can make this concept clear and I hope you can get three points for this concept. If you like it, please subscribe me. Thanks much.